when you're insulin resistant, that is, you've got metabolic syndrome, pretty much every chemical in the body is not quite right. Some are up, some are down, few are actually at physiologically normal levels. Traditionally, the focus is on the big guns, sugar, insulin, and cholesterol. In this series, we take a look at some of the other players, who they are, what they're up to, and how they're part of the state of insulin resistance. This week, we feature methyl glyoxyl. In someone who is insulin resistant, methyl glyoxyl is higher than it should be. So who is methyl glyoxyl? Well, it's a metabolite and a metabolic signaling molecule. It's one of the ages that we consume, but most of the methyl glyoxyl circulating is made endogenously. A couple of biochemical pathways make it. The biggest producer of methyl glyoxyl is glycolysis. This is the process that splits six carbon sugars, such as glucose, into two three carbon compounds, referred to as trioses. Trioses are small and nimble. They spontaneously do a little chemistry. It's this chemistry that creates methyl glyoxyl. It's estimated that around 0.05 to 0.1% of molecules going through the glycolytic process fall apart like this. The problem with these methyl glyoxyls, they're sticky. They stick onto lysine and arginine residues of proteins, aging the proteins. And it's quite a gedunte to get them off. No worries. Cells deploy the glow pack. Cells have a couple of enzymes that can take care of the methyl glyoxyl problem. The most important is a pair of enzymes, glyoxylase 1 and glyoxylase 2, or GLO1 and GLO2 for short. These enzymes work sequentially to neutralize the methyl glyoxyl threat. To give you some idea of how serious cells take this, glyoxyls make up 13% of the proteins inside of a cell. How well yours works depends on genetics and circumstances. Now, the glyoxyl cleanup system is a two-step process. GLO1 can grab onto the methyl glyoxyl when it reacts with glutathione, the cell's primary antioxidant. GLO1 is able to blind the hemithioacetal, creating SD-lactyl glutathione. GLO2 then comes in for the kill and pulls the glutathione off, leaving a D-lactate behind. The D-lactate is harmless and, in the long run, quite valuable. It can be recycled for energy. Now, the system is set up so that when more glucose comes in, more GLO1 is made. Well, up to a point. Unfortunately, when glycolysis speeds up a notch or two, cells can run short of glyoxylase, leaving methyl glyoxyl running amok. And this causes damage inside cells. Now, the damage is not always confined to inside cells either, because methyl glyoxyl is small. It can zoot outside of the cell and get up to mischief there too. Higher plasma methyl glyoxyl levels are associated with heart disease and mortality. So, when does glycolysis speed up? Well, the stick-ups happen when oxygen is in short supply and or there's lots of sugar. Unfortunately, these are common situations when you're insulin resistant. A couple of cells are especially vulnerable because they can't shut the door on glucose. These include the cells lining the blood vessels, as well as the cells in the kidney, eye, and nerves. These are the organs, more often than not, that break under the strain of metabolic troubles. Now, you've heard of the war against sugar. Odds are, if you're watching this video, you're in the trenches right now. Sugar spikes can be fought with lifestyle and drugs. There are quite a few different kinds of glucose-lowering men, and they work in different ways. For many of them, they lower sugar levels in the blood by putting more sugar in the cells. Aish. They're effectively creating 
mo-methaglyoxo. And this is the real enemy. Methaglyoxyl is 50,000 times more reactive than glucose. This is probably one of the reasons why good glycemic control does not always guarantee good health. So, the war should be a war on methylglyoxyl. So, how do you go to war against methylglyoxyl? Well, you have two options. Make less and beef up the methylglyoxyl defenses. First prize, send in less sugar by cutting carbs. It's a no-brainer. Now, the glucose that enters a cell has a couple of options. It can be stored as glycogen, it can be used in the pentose phosphate, or it can be split to generate energy. Storing it stops glycolytic flux. Now, the amount of glucose stored by any given cell is finite. <laughs> that is, when the cupboard is full, it's full. So you can't necessarily pack more in, but you can empty the cupboard on a regular basis. This is what exercise does. The other benefit of a little sweating is it improves blood flow and thus oxygen delivery. Since the glycolysis pathway is favored under circumstances where there is less oxygen, exercising is a two-for-one deal. What about beefing up defenses? Well, globe 1 can only blind methylglyoxal that is hooked up with glutathione. So adequate supplies of glutathione on absolute necessity. Unfortunately, the high levels of oxidative stress that go hand in hand with insulin resistance make keeping glutathione levels satisfactory inherently challenging. Look out for the glutathione episode in the ups and downs of insulin resistance series to find out more. So what can you do to glow more? Well, fortunately, it's relatively easy to boost glow one production. Insulin does it. So if you're producing truckloads of insulin, which you are when you're insulin resistant, you've got this one covered. The other way to boost glow one production is to take a soupçon of poison with most meals. This will activate the antioxidant response element, turning on the gene expression of multiple defense enzymes, including GLOW1 as well as glutathione. So eating vegetables is a two-for-one deal too. Finally, GLOW1 should be considered a finite resource. So give your little guys some time off. Officially, the glyoxylase system is designed to clean up methyl glyoxyl, but it can and it does do duty disabling other dicarbonyls, which often arrive via dinner. You can minimize the level of these compounds you're consuming by cooking like an Italian mama. Use a low moist heat with lots of tomato and lemon juice. Here are a few of the journal articles I used to tell the methylglyoxal story. Methylglyoxal is just one of hundreds of chemicals in the body that are amiss when you're suffering from metabolic syndrome. Subscribe to our channel to learn more about some of the other players in the ups and downs of insulin resistance series. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.